Travis Scott, welcome to Show Studio. Hello, thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, so I'm going to be asking you a series of questions. Some of them are from fans, members of the public. Some of them are from friends, people you know, collaborators of yours. But the first question is mine. Um, so when we were getting all of the submissions in and people were asking questions, I realised that so many of your fans, people who love your music, they really idolise your lifestyle and the sort of the world that you've built around yourself, your performing, your connections. Um, but then I was interested in actually when I listen to your music, you don't, I think, necessarily portray this sense of a perfect life. You know, lots of your songs deal with relatively um, difficult themes or there's a sense of sadness or even apathy or confusion that runs through them and attention. And given so many people look up to your life, I was wondering, would you say that you are happy? Huh. I was actually asking myself that uh, two days ago. Um, um, I could say uh, um, I'm in a way better mental spot than I was maybe uh, five years ago. Um, I guess some fr frustrations transition to other frustrations, but it's like a better frustration. And I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah. you know, sometimes in life, some of the things that may seem like annoying and like frustrate you the most, um, you might hit a point in your life where like you might excel and things might be going good, but then you're always trying to achieve the next goal, which sure. you know brings you another frustration. Mm. Um, I think that's what I'm dealing with, and I'm still trying to deal with like balance between like um, the real me and my outer shell. You know, um, who's the real you? Uh, I feel like it's somebody that's been misunderstood, and I feel like um, I'm just very ambitious, and I'm I'm just like I'm driven to like go somewhere like where there's like architecture just design or just like a super high level creativity i'm trying to just sure. hit that level and and right now i'm just like you know i'm just in the field of just like battling and just like warlord and just like taking over and just like controlling my own island mm -hmm. you know and i feel like once i feel like my island's safe i can just kind of like venture off to those ideas i see um a question that we got was from the brilliant artist Arthur Jaffa, he asked, how would you articulate the difference between being a rock star and being a hip hop artist? Um, to be honest, uh, I wouldn't even put myself in neither category. Uh, sure. They both have stereotypes, right? And I'm just like, a, I'm a person that go against all types of stereotypes. And I feel like um, I just create music for living that's it i don't mm -hmm. make it for like it's not a specific color race uh you know you know sex gender it's just for like a lifestyle sure. you know um now whether you deem it as rock star hip-hop is up to you but to me it's just like music um but you know i'm i'm somewhere way more left than rock star way more left than hip-hop yeah so i guess to answer that question i'm kind of that's why i feel in my mind um I feel like rock star might be too dark and hip hop might too, be too conscious. I see, I see. You know? Someone asked, kind of talking about what you're saying in terms of sort of fitting in, this was a question from one of your fans. They asked if you ever felt, um, so it's called Zach Turkey, if, if you ever felt like there were times where you wanted to quit or that music wasn't ne necessarily for you, like you didn't have faith in what you were doing. Yeah, hell no. Nah. That's good. Hell no. Nah. Because uh, quitting is never an option. But have there been times where you've maybe felt like you talked about being misunderstood before? Have there been times where you've maybe felt like people weren't understanding it and then that frustration mm. leads you to maybe not want to continue on that path? That's the shit that give me that's the shit that get me going. Mm hmm That type of shit right there. Um, not being accepted is like my whole my whole driver. Like people not fucking with me. I just want to prove a point that I'm not as bad as I just wanna know what you don't fuck with, you know, and that's always helpful information. Um, and I, I get that advice to everybody. Like, if someone, if you feel like quitting is the thing, just mm -hmm. channel the quitting to like that extra pump, the second win. Sure. Someone, Ruben Ferreria, said, and have you ever been annoyed by the fame that you have and this idea that, you know, money can't buy you happiness, which I guess kind of relates to that, is in a way, if what keeps you going is being sort of misunderstood or criticized, the more successful you become, it can be harder to have that sort of catalyst to sort of push against something. Um, yeah, shit, I was just going through that like 15 minutes ago. Like, um, I was trying to go to the store and it's like, mad people surrounding the car and I can't get out and it takes me like 20 minutes to get out the fucking car and shit. Mm -hmm. Like, 
I don't want to wait to get the out the fuck take twenty minutes to get the fuck out the car. Like, I just want to get the car. Famous. Uh, it's not about just being famous. It's just about not doing what I want to do when sure. I want to do it. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Rules and shit. Like I can't just fucking like without people just like filming me. I can't just like wait in line or just like chill with my friends or just like, walk through the fucking amusement park mm -hmm. without hundred people swarming us. Mm -hmm. You know, we trying to talk and shit. Um. And I don't, it's not bad. It's, to me, it's not all the time, but I just feel like sometimes there's no, there's no boundaries. Sure. Um, but I mean, hey, it's like, you know, it's the shit you got into. But I mean, it, I just wish it was a better balance between that. But hey, it's like, what the fuck? We just got to live with it. I've got a question from John Galliano, the fashion designer. He asked, well, he said, I believe you embody a new glamour for men. I would love to hear your views on glamour. Uh, yeah, shit. I think they need to make uh, male makeup. Yeah? Yeah. You gonna start your own line? Um, I don't know, but it sounds cool. Yeah. The, um, I mean, I just think, I just think motherfuckers just need to be fresh, um, you know, at all times, mm. you know. I ain't the freshest nigga, you know what I'm I got pimples and shit. Um, I don't clean my fingernails all the time. <laughs> <laughs> You said in an interview before, you said, I think you said, I'm not cute, I'm gorgeous. Yeah. What did you mean by that? Spirit. Okay. <laughs> uh, you know, um, you know. <laughs> Let's talk about music. So I have a question from Bjork. She said... Oh my God, that's crazy. I know, it's pretty cool, no? I love you. <laughs> <laughs> she said, where do you, write your, where do you write your rhymes? Do you walk during it for rhythm or do you sit? Do you do it in crowds? Do you do it in private? Man, where do you? I have a question for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, man, I love your shit. That's good. Uh, I make, um, I do a lot of, like, I get, either like I uh, make a beat, you know, wherever the, the shit is to make the beat, whether it's my laptop. I mean, I play that beat wherever I'm at. So I could sure. be like freestyling um, in the whip, um, you know, backstage somewhere in the car, fucking. You know, in a hotel, we just chilling. Mm. Um, and then, because, like, I don't really just, like, put pen to pad. I stopped doing iPhone. I stopped writing shit down. Um, I stopped writing shit down. First album, I, my first two albums, I ain't, I ain't never iPhone nothing. I just kind of just, like, went to the mic and just kept rapping until I got my words right. Um, so, but I, I kind of, like, come up with ideas and shit. Mm in the most weirdest places, because I feel like that's where, it's, that's where it's at. I genuinely hate studios nowadays. It's, it's starting to become like one of the most uncomfortable places for me. Why do you say that? Um, it's cold at all times. It's like shit don't work fast enough. It's too much space, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I just like shit loud, sometimes the sub. It's just like, you know, shit like that. Mm -hmm. And it's not true to sound. Mm -hmm. I feel like uh, it's kind of very misleading, you know, so you turn the music up very loud there, it sounds very good, then you go in the car, it just sounds all fucking low. Is that why you like live performing so much? Because obviously that people, you know, your live, the way you conduct yourself when you're, when you're doing your concerts, it's, it's quite infamous. And is it part of the fact that you feel like the music makes more sense in that context? Yeah, I, I kind of, I design all my music for shows, mm -hmm. um, show, you know, um, you know, people, I think that's the true Billboard Hot 100, mm -hmm. 200 fans. Mm -hmm. I have a question from Virgil Abloh. Uh, He's a friend of yours. Um, it was about the live shows. He said, creative direction wise for your live show, if you could think of something that was impossible today, but realistic in 10 years, what would it be? <laughs> uh, amusement park. Meets concert. Right, yeah, right, while I'm going, I like see. while I perform in the middle, like at the highest level of Bon Jovi, <laughs> the <laughs> highest level of that world tour, like actual people moving, and the 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 barrier of keeping the barrier away from stage and fans. Oh, that's interesting. Um, ten years, I feel like it happened. Right now, it seems very impossible. <laughs> Well, we have a question that relates to that it's from one of your fans, Ian Otis. He said, when you're at your shows, do you think your perspective is completely different 
to that of the fans or do you almost feel like you're one of the fans while you're performing? Um, man, you know it's crazy. Like, um, two days ago, I was like, I was in my car, I was like, I was in the van, I was mad tired, just sleepy as shit. And uh, I was like, man, I'll, that was the first time I felt like, because sometimes I'd be like, man, I feel like I'm a fan. Like, uh, like tonight, right? I got a show tonight. And right now I'm like, I'm in the mindset of like, yo, I'm about to go see Travis Scott perform, but like, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah, like, I, don't, I, I don't even know what my, like, I know what my stage looks like, but I don't know what it's going to look like physically in person in, in mm -hmm. the venue. So I'm like, yo, I can't wait to see that. Then I don't know what the music is going to sound like specifically through this specific venue. So I'm excited to hear how loud this shit is going to be. Yeah. Um, and I'm a fan of seeing the fans. Like, man, yeah. that's like a show in my, just seeing people rock left to right, fly. That shit is like its own show. Mm. You know, um, I'm glad I don't have to deal with like boring ass fans. Like niggas are just <laughs> sitting there looking at me like fucking just like, like this. they're looking at a fucking opera or something. You see motherfuckers, man, some of these motherfuckers don't even be looking at me. It's like. Uh, they, you know, they, the music is like... Do you get annoyed when they're taking pictures? Oh, right? man, yeah, but, you know, it's a lot of these kids. They just, man, their phones is, like, gone. I don't know. So mm -hmm. I even have this one part of the um, set where I, I tell people to put their cell phone lights up, and it's like you just see this one big blank area of no cell phones because, mm -hmm. like, kids just don't bring their cell phones, and then you just see the outskirts. It's like, mm -hmm. So it's just dope. Someone asked, it kind of relates to that, the phones thing. It was a question from a fan, but they didn't leave their name. They said, how do you feel about the internet in the music business? So I guess the relationship between digital and, and music. I think now it's good that some of the digital stuff is catching up to like music and like really what people are listening to. Um, the internet is always the king of everything. I love the internet. I'm not an internet hater. Um, you're like a digital native, really. I, I guess you can't. Do you remember times before the internet? Not, not really. Uh, nah, I was yeah. I'm part of Dial Up, Dial Up Gang. What's up? <laughs> now we rocking AOL. You know we rocking. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I'm so glad I'm not part of that weak times where it's boring. <laughs> um, but you know, I do still have a connection to that, um, and I do still respect, you know, the whole culture that, um, you know, even my DJ Chase B. You know, we come from that whole, like, study of just, like, those times where shit was just analog. Mm. And I love that. I still go by that to this day. Even though I'm from digital world, I still think it's an importance in, of knowing, like, analog shit, knowing how to do shit on hand. I still use it to this day. It's, like, it's part of me. It's just my liking, you know. Um, mm. But, um, you know, I still feel like, you know, digital is super main drive and um, mm. I'm in love with that too. Someone has asked a pertinent question. So it was a fan called Yvette Show who's asked, can you more or less explain how drugs play a part in your creative process? Shit, man. Uh, I don't do a lot of drugs, uh, shit. Um, so I don't even know. I only think like real drugs are like crack, heroin and fucking like, you know, meth shit that really get you fucked up, really get you tweaking. If you ain't doing that, then you ain't doing drugs. Like, personally, like, you ain't doing acid and mm -hmm. shit like that. You ain't doing drugs. So, I mean, you know, I can't tell you about any, any of that shit. I guess because there's, like, a long history of, like, you know, like, like beat culture or whatever of people put, using different substances to enhance their creativity. Yeah, I think that's a myth. I think that's, yeah. like, weak people, like, need all that weird shit just to, like, get all, like, tapped into their fucking brain. Like, I think knowledge is power. Drugs is just, like, you know, a mental cool down. Um... It just put me at ease. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't tap into drugs to like say what's on my mind. I can do that shit sober. Mm -hmm. I am a drug sober. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm the most mental, I'm the most highest potent drug sober ever. Drugs is what actually calmed me down. I see. Uh, so I wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't recommend anyone to go pick up a fucking drug to like, tap into their brain I don't mm. think that's where it's at I think it's really finding who you are that's where you really mm. you know I'd be like Steve Jobs man you'd be listening to these dudes talk and it's kind of like they go through these different levels and stages of like uh finding where they at mentally and um and I think maybe they experimented with drugs on like a just like a come down man because they're dealing with so much pressure mm -hmm. 
I don't think that was just like the key to them finding things, you know. Um, some people might do drugs and sporadically spaz out mm -hmm. and come up with the craziest shit possible. That's also a possibility. But I don't think that's, I think that's in them. Mm -hmm. They just didn't know it. Just didn't know it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And your friend Bella Hadid has asked, where's the craziest place you've ever got high? Ta uh, damn. Oh, uh, I got it. <laughs> I got it. Bob Dylan's tour bus <laughs> parked up in Rick Rubin's backyard. Was that a pivotal experience? For you? Smoked out, <laughs> closed out. <laughs> yeah, fuck with me. More serious question. Again, from one of your fans, a guy called Lee Lavi Richardson from London. Have some of your idols become rivals? Uh, <laughs> mm. Be honest. No, I'm, I'm just honestly thinking. And... No. <laughs> no? No. No. Nah. You don't feel competitive? No. Nah. Well, are we competing? What are we competing on? Like, in a good way, you mean? Yeah, it's, like, it's like, I don't be looking at shit like competition, shit. Someone's asked which collaboration for you was the most important and is there one that you regret? Um, <laughs> is there a collaboration I regret? No, nah, I don't even think I made that mistake. That's good. <laughs> I don't think I made that mistake. Honestly. Um, I, it's like a couple of collaborations is very important. Um, Beyonce and... Um, bon Jovi. And, yeah. And talk to me, someone has asked, it seems like the majority of your projects, there's always one song that can be related to a female. Is there a person who you usually have in mind when you connect with the lyrics? Yeah, man, I've written, I've written albums about girls that like fucked my whole head up, man. So is that what motivates you the most, girls? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> it does seem to uh, motivate motivated some, some, um, Crazy projects and shit. Nah, but that's not what motivates me. It, it'd be like times. It'd be like positions I'm in, like at the moment, man. That shit just be getting me hot. Like, man, last time I, last time I was in the fucked up position, but that was over some like, you know, bullshit. Like, you know, whatever. And so I, so I just. I just had to just make an album and just get over that. That's why I made birds. It's but, like therapy. But, yeah, but rodeo, I was on some like, man, motherfuckers like sleeping on me and shit. Niggas is like, like keep telling me like, I need to come with, you know, some type of hit or something. I'm trying to perform at the VMAs. I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to, I'm making, I'm trying to make the illest albums for my generation, man. Mm. Like, you know, and I be feeling like I be doing it. like. I'm like two platinum albums in. Mm -hmm. I ain't asked for none of that. I was just trying to prove my point. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? And I feel like, okay, my third, this is my third, I'm going into my third album. Like, man, I can't. I'm trying to, I'm trying to go into arenas next year. Like I'm already doing arenas now. I'm trying to, I'm trying to just like make that the, you know, just highlight it. Like people just gotta understand, understand Travis. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Someone's asked kind of about that. So a fan called Tavis Whiteside from Illinois has asked, what's your exact goal for music? Leave a legacy and pave the way for newer artists like some of your favorites did, or is it something bigger? Yeah, that's why um, I started my own label, Cactus Jack. And I've been having this in my mind idea for like since I've begun, but I feel like I never want to just like put anybody in an opportunity where I really can't help them. Mm -hmm. I feel like now I'm in just like so, such a like, you know, place to where I can like help artists um before I leave I just want to just leave the whole world inspired I just want to leave a trail of inspiration um a timeline for when you know I shifted culture I sh you know 
man, I'm like the plate tectonics of this whole shit. Like, I'm trying to just scrape this shit, you know. I'm trying to separate everything. Mm. You get what I'm saying? I'm just, I, you know, I want to just be attached to every, you know, point of the decade, every every year. Mm. Um, you know, um, I try to do it all the time, every year. Like, I try to just make it a leading way, whether I work with artists, whether I work with um, producers. Um, I just try to just, like, transition something in somebody, you know, mm. whether it's sound or... But it's interesting because I wouldn't necessarily say that you're a sort of political artist. Like, there's a question actually from Nick Knight, who is standing over there and yeah. who is a collaborator of yours and obviously the director of Show Studio. And he said, correct me if I'm wrong, but after listening to your work, politics do not seem to feature prominently. However, in these highly politicized times, do you feel that part of your future role is to be a voice for change or rebellion? Or do you feel that music is not a place for that? Um, I think it is, but... Um you know, uh, politics is so like it's such a controversial thing, and it's so it's so like it's so like tit for tat, mm -hmm. you know. And as soon as you speak your opinion, you're fighting a million people. And I kind of just like I say what's on my mind, and I say what bothers me. Um, and I always I feel like you know playing sideline to like um, sh shit when shit's going wrong is just not. It's never a good thing, and there's definitely a lot of issues that, um, you know, is to be spoken out on, and we that definitely can be dealt with. But fighting everything, you know, and being like trying to be a political stand front and do music for me is just like a battle. Mm -hmm. um, I always think it's important to leave a message in your music for your fans to guideline and to help them to stay out the way of fuck shit. Mm -hmm. That's my political standpoint. I'm always like, lead you on my mental, what I see, what I know, now that I'm behind these walls and like, this is what I know to stay away from fuck shit and just how to get, get, get what you need to get and keep going, you get what I'm saying? Um, especially being, you know, African American and this shit, you know, um, we got a lot of shit going against us, so, um, you know, inspiring kids, you know, Amahi, you know, it's like, I got a big, big, big fucking job. You get what I'm saying? And so I, I kind of just don't want to like bleed them out with like the wrong message. I don't want to even bleed them out with some overpowered shit that I can't even, you know, do. I, but I, I'll tell them like, yo, this is how I feel. This is how I think we need to move and, you know, you know, you can go with that, you know. But do you feel the pressure of being a role model? And like, yeah, yeah, you always. must feel that, that people look up to you and that they're going to follow what you do and things like that. Is that? Yeah, yeah. How do you balance that though? Because, you know, you're like, you're a very young man. Like, you're still probably working things out for yourself. So having people look up to you. Yeah, I mean, shit, I just got to balance. I just got to balance it. I mean, it's shit hard. Shit, I'm dealing with that shit every day, but shit, I'm going to figure it out. A question from a fan from Ohio, Brandon Crombie, has said, how has your family reacted to you becoming this huge icon in the music industry? Uh, you know, sometimes they get weird, like, <laughs> but, you know, they're cool, you know. Um, um, they just say people talk to them all the time. <laughs> um, it's, it's cool. It's just good to see them happy, you know. You think they're very proud of you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, shit, they'd rather me be doing this than, like, fucking up somewhere, you know. But do you think... Do you think there was a moment where they perhaps wanted you to take a very different path? It must have taken quite a lot of strength of oh, yeah, yeah, shit. It went, into, it went until I put out, like, my first album or something. It was like, all right, this shit real, you know? Mm. Yeah. Let's talk a bit about fashion. Um, a fan called Jay has asked, how big do you feel your influence is on the fashion industry? Uh, um, shit. I mean, hopefully it's, just, it's inspiring. Um, you know... I love fashion, you know, um, I don't just like wake up every day and like, you know, fucking jack off to this shit, you get what I'm saying? Um, you know, I just like clothes and, you know, I just like to inspire, I love being fresh as hell, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I just want to, you know, keep pushing Houston style, like real Houston style, real Houston culture, shit like that, you know, um, you know, just keep being a big influence, um, yeah. But do you think that this, this is also a question from a fan, Ian Barnes, he said, do you think in this era of music sort of ever being consistently entwined with fashion, has it been de detrimental to hip hop? Hell yeah. You know, fashion is like the front leading. You know, a lot of niggas, a lot of niggas be fresh and, you know, music don't even be cool. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? People still fuck with them, you know? Um, but it's all just being about like idealistic, you know? Um, 
you know, it's a lot of a lot of fresh artists make very good music. So you know, it's people people like you know looking up to somebody that's fresh. Would you? I know you've kind of dabbled, but would you move into fashion design like someone like Kanye has? Nah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, in a sense, I mean, I'm, I'm an artist, so I just I like to do everything, architecture, whatever. You know, I design on my own merch, so um, you know, and I I, I like I have like collab with Subi. I done just done shit with like Helmut Lang. Mm -hmm. You know, I do shit like that all the time. Like I'm into it. And I have like more shit coming um, this year, footwear and shit like that. Um, you know, so yeah, but you know. It's more just like architecture. It's just like, you know. Mm -hmm. We actually have a question from one of your friends, I think from back home, called Dozy. Oh, yeah. He said, after remodeling the house in Houston, are you still interested in taking some years off music and studying architecture? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> me and my friend Dozy are supposed to go to um, Harvard, go to architecture school in Harvard. You're going to go do that? Yeah, we're going to do that. When? Um, I think after my third album. OK. Yeah, I'm going to do it after my third album. Wow, Tyler. <laughs> um, next question from a, from a fashion designer, Martine Rose, who I think you're a fan of. She's a great designer. She said, which five famous people alive or dead would you have to dinner? Huh? Which five famous people alive or dead would you have over for dinner? Um, uh, Marilyn Monroe. Why? You said for dinner, right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Michael Jackson. Steve Jobs. Abraham Lincoln. Jimi Hendrix. It's a good list. What would you cook? Fried chicken, macaroni, fries. Solid dinner. Solid. <laughs> um, another question from a fan, Kevin Castillo. Do you feel like you've shown the rest of the world Houston's culture? You talked a bit about that before. Um, not entirely. Okay. Um, He's from Houston, so. But I think this year uh, I'm going like way more in depth to like, I'm recording my album in Houston, um, shooting more videos there. I'm kind of like doing more. I'm doing a festival in Houston. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm working on stuff like that. Um, I just feel like I have to just build up to this point, you know? I feel like now is the time. How influential has being from there been on you, though, and your work? Do you feel it constantly? Yeah, a lot. Um, in, in the music and in shows, and even in fashion, it's just like Houston culture is just like inbred. I think it's like the leading thing right now. It's just like everyone's adapt once, like, it's like, is a native of Houston. Mm. You know, whether you're from there or not, you know. But then someone also asked, like, was it hard sort of when you were there, like waking up there, knowing that it wasn't really the place that you wanted to be or that you had this hope for something more? Man, yes, it was so hard. Like looking out the window, and you just see straight land. I tell my friends all the, the, all the time I grew up in like New York and L.A. and shit. It's way different. It's just like, you know, it's like a, it's like a real life dream you're looking at, looking forward to. So, you know, it's super hard, but I was kind of like... That was like inspiration too. I was just painting my own picture, looking out the window. Mm. Dozy has also asked, what memories do you have of the pit? Uh, I got a lot of memories, shoebox. My shoebox is on my wall with the speakers in them, my blue wall. I remember I had Sunnyside written on my blue wall and chalk. I don't know why I did that. I had a mattress. I used to have this crazy bed set. I took the whole bed set down. <laughs> put the mattress on the floor in the corner just to make more space. I remember my yellow speakers, my Rocket 5s, or well, it was like Rocket 8s or something like that. I had this big ass Red Bull stick on the side of that shit. And I remember I signed that shit. And I'm this girl I used to fuck with. She had her name on the left speaker and shit. Um, and that desk and my MacBook. And I used to, I used to ask my neighbors for they, uh, for the surround sound, you know how you had a surround sound speakers in your house. Mm -hmm. I used to ask them for that, just the speakers. I ain't need they, I ain't need they um, amp or nothing. 
I used to take my, I used to like set the speakers in my room. I used to have like 20 speakers in my room. I used to have like three amps. I used to turn them all on and just go brazy. Do you ever miss that time? Man, I miss that shit so much, man. I miss that shit so much. Well, because it's interesting because a lot of people, like this was a question that then we- Then again, I don't miss that shit. I be riding Lambos and shit now, like what the fuck? Yeah, do you sometimes think about how differently your life could have gone? <laughs> Hell yeah, man. I be looking outside, be like, man, this shit is crazy. Shit, I'm right here with Nick Knight. You know, we used to look at this nigga pictures when I was a kid. This don't make no sense. Like, man, like, show studios. <laughs> this shit was like, man, like, them them photos is like everything. I remember we used to just be on, like, the blogs and just be like, man, we used to be looking at magazines, be like, yo, this nigga is crazy. Like, the way he just make dark look so light and just vibrant and just like, man, you know, I can talk to this dude now. Mm. He shot my cover. Mm. You get what I'm saying? I be thinking like, man, these are, these are all ideas I've been having since I was like 16, 15. Do you think you've changed a lot? Um, nah, man. I, I feel like if anything, I got more crazier. Like, just like, I seen too much. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm even more hype. You know, when you see it, man, you know, it's like, um, I grew up in, I grew up in Missouri City, Texas, right? So, in this neighborhood called Meadow Creek. So, I used to wake up, drive, go to my high school, went to Elkins, right? After school, I go to my friend's house, like, like, Olympia. we'll sit there all day on the internet looking at everything we want to do, that seemed very fake and impossible, impossible, right? And then now, like, four years later, I start going crazy, and then, like, five, six years later, shit start going, and then, like, you know, now we start actually seeing the shit and touching the shit and, like, doing it, and it's just, like, crazy. Do you ever worry about burning out? Hell no. Nah. Hell no. Nah. Different I kind of question. I don't know. I just, I just try to find the interest. Like you gotta just find some interest. In I don't want to get bored. Um, I have a question that's yeah, different tack. So Edward Enemful, who is the new editor of British Vogue, has said daytime or nighttime, and why? Hmm. Nighttime. Everything's for real. Daytime, everything's fake. <laughs> what do you mean? No one's ever real in the daytime. Are you being real now? Yeah, that's just me. But I don't live in the daytime. I only came out for y'all. That's nice of you, thank you. <laughs> um, one question that I have to ask, because so many, like, hundreds and hundreds of people sent it in, they just, everyone was saying, what advice would you have for young kids trying to make it in the music industry? And, like, how do they stay motivated? You know, lots of people from Houston writing in saying, you know, advice for a young artist. Yo, listen. I know this shit sound crazy as fuck. But the real shit that nigga Jay-Z said on that new album was signing and shit. Man, it's just all cool, but if you can do it by yourself, oh my God, do it by yourself. So, more, it's, it's way iller. And self, self team shit is like the illest, fastest shit. Um, home studios is the most litest shit of all time, dude. Trust me, I'm doing albums in my crib. <laughs> like, just like you can do your album in your crib, do my album in my crib. You don't need all that crazy shit, man. Just go crazy, learn how to mix. And then boom, dude, the fucking SoundCloud and fucking like shit that you can get your music on fast, YouTube. Let's, let's go. <laughs> Lots of people ask what's the most important thing that Kanye ever taught you? Um, self riding. Nigga, going hard. Going extremely fucking hard and relentless, relentlessness every day, bro. You practice that shit. One question that I think is maybe, maybe it's a good note. It's a good note to end on in a way. So a collaborator and friend of yours, Kid Cudi. Oh shit. Question, Where do you see yourself 10 years from now? 
Man, I see myself, uh, shit, man, just like at the top somewhere, man, with my family and just like stadiums and just like artists that's just like going crazy and just like, you know, I'm just, I'm at my highest, I'm just at a super peak with my creativity, you know, and just hopefully at peace. Which is more important to you, the family or the career? Family. Do you think you'll be a good dad? Yeah. I think so. How many kids do you want? Mm. I don't know. This, this is a See what happens. question I never thought about. <laughs> Would you want them to go into music? Mm. I don't know. Maybe like baseball. Like that could work. But I guess what I'm interested in is like what you define success as. Like if it all finished now, are you happy with your contribution that you've made so far? Mm, yeah, I can still do more. You know, that's my frustration. I'm ready to get it all out right now. Like, ah! But do you feel like you're building a legacy? And like with each Yeah, year? hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. Every day I breathe. And what do you want people to see you as? Like, if you were writing your own obituary, what would you want it to say? Um, an inspirational, creator levelist. This, this dude was just hitting a peak at every point. Like, whether it was fucking shows, whether it was music, whether it was fucking covers, whether it was clothes, whether it was this, whether it was that. This dude was going crazy. Travis, thanks very much. Thank you.